to start with, I mean, what motivated you to not seek re-election this time around? I mean, you've been in the part of the party, part of the legislative assembly since 99. Why now? That's probably the answer right there. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it, it was. A, it's a tough decision. I think every politician goes through it. If and number one, you want to have that opportunity to make the decision yourself, rather than the constituents make that decision for you. Um, but it was definitely the time. I was kind of waffling, and I literally woke up one morning, said, "No, I can't commit to another four and a half years or five years, depending on what it would be." And so the decision was really quite simple, and I and I really have found, you know, it's it's not always easy talking, telling people for the first time, but I just really haven't felt like I've been uh, waffling at all. I, it's it's the right decision for me, our family, even the boy, even though the boys are gone, but right decision for me. Cindy's retired, has been for a couple of years, uh, to commit to four and a half more years uh, just would be asking too much. You being part of that old guard, I mean. You being part of kind of the old guard, I mean, there's, there's, old. you know, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's right the on. The original guard there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it's about 80 years of experience walking out the door, you know, in an election year. I mean, just, do you have any concern right. for where the party's going to be left without some of that veteran leadership still a part of it? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not concerned. You know, people learn the rules very, very quickly. I've been very impressed with the people that, you know, were elected in 2020, just as I was impressed with the ones elected in 2016. Some of that crop has take, taken leadership roles within caucus and in cabinet. And I think that will be the case uh, in the ne after the next election. You know, you could have said the same when we lost Dan Dutremont or we lost Ken Crevettes. Uh, who had been the deputy premier for a long time, and I don't necessarily think our government has missed the beat. Other people step up. That is the tradition of this place. You know, you never have, you're never in one of these offices for a lifetime. Uh, the, I don't know how many people, how many ministers have been through our, the office that I have right now, or how many different people have sat around the caucus table. It's ever evolving. Uh, that's what this place is, and and it's worked quite successfully, and it'll continue to work in the future. Do you feel that there is a, a need for the party and <clears throat> its, its presence within the legislative assembly to have some new faces, to have some new blood in the roles? Well, for sure. I, you know, I, I really think it's uh, valuable. You know, and it, it, I mean, a caucus is always made up of new and old, urban, rural, you know, all of that makes for a better caucus, whether it's in opposition or in government. Uh, I remember when we made our first inroads into Regina and Saskatoon, actually it wasn't Regina, it was only in Saskatoon in 2003, and those three members at that time brought a lot to our caucus because we were pr pretty much all rural. Uh, so it's, it's urban, rural, it's young, it's old, it's uh, various experiences, add to be better decision making, I believe, for the people of Saskatchewan, ultimately. Right, you know, uh, boy, that's a, that's a big question, and I've kind of thought I should be have a real quick answer for it. But you know, I have to say that, and and most people will ask me, you know, that six years that you're the minister of health must have been heck. Um, I would say no, it was the best. Those were the best years that I have had. In, not that I've had, but I enjoyed the most, I guess, as far as a government member. Uh, we were able to make so many changes. We were a new government. Uh, we had lots of ideas. Uh, we were working closely with, uh, whether it's the Saskatchewan Union of Nurses or the Saskatchewan Medical Association, uh, SRNA, the College of Physicians. Um, we were able to increase the long-term care beds and, you know, just a, a lot of the things that we did in those first six years, of course, stand out in your mind. Uh, as for the constituency of Indian Head Milestone, um, maybe that's part of the reason that uh, I made my first decision not to run because the name has changed and I couldn't change it in my head. I don't know if I could ever say White City Capel, even though they're great communities. It was always Indian Head Milestone to me. And you know, just some of the improvements that we've made, for example, on the highways, uh, within, within the various communities with grants that uh, went to their way. So just a, a number of things and I, I just hope that uh, I represented them well. Oh boy, that's a, that's a really easy one, the people. You know, whether it's um, at the constituency level. You know, I uh, <clears throat> kind of grew up around the Milestone area. Didn't know many people in Indian Head and have some real good friends there just because of 25 years of, I guess, service. But certainly the people within the constituency, uh, the people within around our caucus table, I said to, I've been around for quite a while, so I say to a lot of them when they first get here, 
you know there's only 61 of us in this province. Um, you don't get to walk down, to this, down the street and talk to another teacher. You don't get to walk down the street and talk to whatever in your community because you're the only one. Uh, there's other elected officials, but not on the provincial level. So uh, I'm going to miss my colleagues a lot. You know, and, and I don't know whether any other minister would say it, but uh, the civil service has been absolutely amazing. I've had great deputy ministers to work for, so the people for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I can say, uh, you know, there was certainly some low points and we all know what that was, but the support was incredible. Uh, the support from, again, constituents, you know, and not to, not to uh, look at the numbers too close, but I believe my plurality after uh, in 2020 was as high or higher than it ever had been. So the support of the constituents for sure. Um, and the opportunity, you get a different perspective when you're out of cabinet after being in it for as long as I was. Uh, I don't know if I was a better minister, but I looked at things a little differently. Uh, so yeah, lots of, you know, from a, from a very low point, a lot of positives. Um, again, also support from around the province. I remember a mayor that I met only a couple times phoning me. So uh, not from my constituency, but uh, just um, people that understood. Well, we got to get through a spring session. We got to introduce a budget and defend that budget. Um, so, yeah, it'll it'll be the next seven to eight months, as still remaining as the MLA for Indian Head Milestone. Um, and then after that, I don't really have any plans. Uh, I hope to travel a little bit more. We hope to travel a little bit more. I always wanted to get over to Europe and see the the snowboard circuit. I don't know if that's going to happen because my uh, Mark is kind of. It's a weird thing, but in the same boat as I am, he's looking at back and away from what he's done for not quite 25 years, but at 30, 15 years at least. Uh, so, you know, some of those things is what we're looking at doing in the future. I uh, have said to a few people that I am not running in the next election. That doesn't mean I'm fully retired. I'm retiring from politics, not running, but uh, I'll be looking for something in the future. have no idea what it will be. Okay.